Hey guys, how's it going today? Today, I figured I'd show you something a little different. Disregard the mess over there. I generally don't do this, but I figured I would show you how to rebuild a fuser for a Sharp MFP 3070, 3570, or 4070, 4050 series machine. Um, this came out of a unit that I rebuilt on a job yesterday and today I figured I'd show you how to rebuild it as it's broken. Um, this will be a little bit longer of a video. It is pretty detailed but these fusers run about $700 so if you own a business to buy a new one um, it can be quite costly um, to where rebuilding it is uh, fairly easy. To rebuild a fuser, there's a few things you need. You need to have the replacement upper thermistor, which is always good to replace. That's generally the one that is replaced when rebuilding. You'll need two of these bearings right here, and that is for the lower heat roller. You'll need the lower heat roller right there, and then over there you need the sharp MX607 fusing belt. Um, this is for the MX407 FU fuser, just so you are aware. And at this point, I'm just going to kind of set the camera down. That's the view that I can, I can give. Um, so for this particular build right here, you only need a pair of snap ring pliers. You could use a screwdriver if you're good with it. Um, you can use a Phillips screwdriver. You don't need that. And it's always good to have a couple rags around because there is some grease on the area where they take off uh, the bearings. So without any further ado, this is, it looks more complicated than it really is. Um, but I'm going to do my best to show you everything on camera. So let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we're going to want to do is pull the sensor wire off over here. This is your fusing exit sensor and just pull it off. Don't break it. All this stuff will be reused and, and then you can just pull it down like that and get that wire out of the way. Then we're going to take our screwdriver and we're going to take off these bolts these screws on the case. And we're just going to set them to the side. All the case screws are the same. Take off the case. And that just pops off too, like so. And then We'll go ahead and do the side. Just take all these. All these out on the side. And you'll take them all out. Do be aware that make sure you, as an individual, remember how which screws go where. If you have trouble remembering, you can always stick them back in the hole that you took them out of as they, as you take it out, if, if you need to do that. And we have two more screws at the bottom. And like I said, these rebuild parts, they cost uh, probably about 250 bucks. So it's significantly cheaper to rebuild the unit than it is to buy a new one. And I do apologize if this camera view is not the greatest. I'm trying to give you the best view and still kind of see what's actually happening. Oh, 
All this is doing right now is just taking off the plastic case. There are some gears there, so just be aware of that. Um, generally, if you don't know how they go, you can take them and, you know, pull them off or whatever. I just leave them on and set it to the side. And then lift up and set your bottom off. Now you're actually at the, um, that was removing the case of the fuser. A few screws, not too bad. So we're gonna go ahead and remove one screw there and directly across from it, the same screw. So pull it up and pull it out, set it to the side. And just as a FYI, um, this is the lower heat roller right there and the belt is behind it and let's see i'm going to take all these screws off at the top and there is a total of six you understand now why the power screwdriver is much better for this than having a man. Take that, set it to the side. And also, if you have one, you don't necessarily need it. Pliers will work. A spring hook is nice to have around. It does aid in pulling some of these little springs off right here. And take that unit and just set it off somewhere. I just figured I would do this today, so I do apologize. It's not probably the the, the prettiest, but it's gonna get it done. Then you have some springs right here. You wanna go ahead and remove. And in the replacement parts that you get, you do get new, these new springs, so you do not need to keep them. Just set them to the side just to make sure. I have had them occasionally where they were forgot or fell out of the box and you know, you will need them. Then you have this little black lever uh, separation piece right here. It runs along the length, it just slides off and pops out like so. Set it to the side. Um, I don't know how well you can see. Bear with me a moment. Um, hopefully that'll aid in giving a little more light. So you have your lower heat roller right here and your, your actual fusing belt is this darker color right there. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and separate the bulb holders from the unit. That way we can disassemble our electric and pull out the bulbs. Very easy to do. They can be somewhat snug in there. Just go ahead and kind of loosen them up. And it's the exact same thing, the holders on this other end right here. It's two screws and for the heat roller, one of them is plastic for the lower and for the other one, it is metal. Then what you, all you need to do is just kind of flip it over. Huh, that would explain why this one probably quit working. Very interesting. It's not supposed to do that. So in any event, we'll go ahead and 
set it to the side. Generally, they stay on there. I'll put it on whenever I'm done. So just flip it over. And you have a couple connections. You have your lower roller on each side. You have your trans or your fusing belt connection. Spring hook, this is another reason where it comes in handy. You can just kind of pull it up. Separate it. You get real good. You can actually get the wires back in the way that they they uh, went in. This one is kind of a pain, and I try to just pry it in, in there with my spring hook and separate it like so. And there you have that one. This one's a little easier to get to. Just push down and push down on your clip. If you can get it out. There we go. Sorry, I know my hand's in the way. But it's basically just one of them clips you push down on the tab and pop it out. Even though it's extremely... Does not want to do that. And if you don't know, these are all built in Japan originally. And I swear those folks over there have really tiny hands. Alright, so now we have that one out. And then we're just going to scoop up our next wire right here and pop out that one. All right, and then we're gonna flip it over like I said. Back to the front. And then you can take your clips off and hold your, your ball bins, your halogen bulb, that's what they look like. Like I said, one on each side for each bulb. And then you can slide the halogen bulb out of the unit. Don't break these, you do reuse them. They are replaceable if you do have a burnout one. However, generally um, as a professional, these are rebuilt three times and then replaced. So if you do the math, you can figure out that you have um, Basically, you could save almost two grand by rebuilding this a few times versus actually just going in and replacing. On the side here, right where my screwdriver is pointing, you've got this little screw right here. There is an identical screw on the other side, except that it's black. Just go ahead and remove that one and set them over there. Then you can separate your lower heat roller. And then we're going to go ahead and remove six more screws. And I'll go ahead and point to you. They're the same on each side. And basically where I was taking them out of is one there, there, and right there. And that allows you to pull that up and free it up. And as always, I always forget this upper thermistor. This is the one that you replace. And then it frees like that. And the only reason we replace these is because they tend to get uh, gunk built up on the actual thermistor and that will cause a, a um, error code to come up on your machine if it builds up too much crapula. So this is the fusing belt unit, which we discussed is this replacement part, MX607FB. 
So you just pop that bad boy open. I'm gonna set it down on the ground just so I have room. And then you just tag your new piece like so. You wanna make sure you get all the tape and plastic and stuff off. Right there is your new springs. I've only ever seen them missing one time, but just hold on to your old ones in case. But those are the springs that you would throw away. Then we can remove this tape and remove this paper. And then you have your new unit. Now, I'm gonna point something out. As you can see, this is how those little brown things are supposed to be on there. And uh, they were broke off on this one, and that's probably why it failed. That is a pressure uh, springs. So looking at the end, you see this one has your shafts on it, like so. And that one has some gears on it. You just want to swap the gears on to your, um, your new shaft, or your new uh, belt, if you will. And they can be like this one. These ones are all bound up. So this belt, uh, you can see the failure right there. That piece broke off. And that little orange tab, that's actually part of a rod that is supposed to be mounted up in there. And that's what caused it to, uh, to fail. But nonetheless, Easy fix and still saves you. And this old one, chunk it because it's garbage. Set your new one right like back like the old one did, just like so. And go ahead and screw it back in. Fairly easy process. I know that the camera does not see all of it, and I do apologize for that. It's very hard to actually film the holes without a camera person. But I know that if you're looking at the video, you can see and do this uh, yourself. It is very simple. And just so you know, if you pay a professional to do this for you, not only will you pay for the parts, you will pay uh, it's roughly $175 to $240 an hour for labor plus parts. So it's worth doing yourself. All right, so now we have that off. And what I'm gonna do is flip this over real quick again. And we're just gonna swap out this thermistor piece right there. Just comes off with that one little quick connect, very easy and chunk it. That is your replacement thermistor. And all the parts that you see in here being replaced, um, this is what is done on a professional, uh, as a professional, this is what we replace. Plug it back in. And what I don't do is tuck the wire back down in there until we flip this up. And we'll go ahead and seat this into place. And then we'll tuck the wires in. Makes it much easier. Just basically feeding the wires down through the, um, the channel. And I'll give you an idea. I know it's, this part is hard to see. It's just one little screw. It just screws it in and holds it against that, that belt, basically. And that basically gives the temperature from the halogen bulb in the belt, and it basically allows it, prevents it from overheating, catching fire, and such like that. And that's why when they go bad or get gunk build up on them, they throw an error code so that that does not occur. 
because you know otherwise it'd be quite quite dangerous this this unit particularly um, it runs it operates at right around 375 degrees Fahrenheit and that is how it actually melts the um, toner to the the paper that's actually what's happening it's not um, you know it's not like an inkjet where the ink comes out and dries on the paper it's actually a polymer resin and that resin is actually melted onto the paper with this unit right here and if you've ever had a machine like this and your toner is smeared off on you on the paper generally usually either the pressure assembly has failed and it's it went out it's got to keep the right amount of pressure like if you print on an envelope it's different than when you do um, just regular paper because it's thicker so that's that that's all tucked in there good to go now your thermistor's on all that good stuff's on now we'll go ahead and we'll open up our mx 607 lh which is this roller right here and same deal as you can see you have a longer end and a shorter end the gear on that goes on the longer end and it is a channel for it so that uh, you can do so i take the gear end off because you do have the snap rings and uh Basically, this is where you need your snap ring pliers to get in there and separate it. And even with the pliers, it's a pain in the butt. And part of that reason is because I use these for something else and never put the correct size back on. So, kind of my fault, but nonetheless and pull off your snap ring. Then you can just slide off your gear. These are your bearings right there. If you don't need them, chunk them. And you do need these brackets again, so keep that. Then you can just slide this other bracket. I always get the one that's going to be a pain, but that's all right. We'll just go ahead and pop the uh, clip off like so. Take that off. Sometimes these bearings can be very um, adhered well. That's totally normal. Sometimes you do have to pry them off, just FYI. That's why um, we replace them. Chunk your roller. When you get to this part, this is where your rag will come in handy because it's very greasy where they put those bearings on. All right, pretty simple. Put your bracket on. Almost forgot to put the bearing on. That would have been embarrassing. Put your replacement bearing on, that way, you know, it works. Put your bearing on. Slide your gear, and then you're going to put your snap ring back on. And do make sure that the snap ring seats properly. And like that. Like I said, get a bearing for our other side. If you see the bearing has a lip on it, that lip goes inward on both sides. So you put your, your bracket and this, this side here, try to feed it like that, otherwise it's a royal pain. And then just put this back on and reseat your 
and that's it. You're done with that, You're done with the snap rings, and you are rocking and rolling. At that point, you can take this, these little clips, just make sure that they're resting in the bearing. So it's flush. And reinsert. Back in like so. And then put the black screw back on the right hand side. And if you ever forget, you know, just the biggest thing is keeping the orientation straight. That way you don't get confused with actually what goes where. And believe me when I tell you that this is an expensive repair that you do not want to have to make. Um, or basically have to pay somebody. You, you do not want to do that. And we can get our little springs out here. I think the people in old JA pan have much smaller hands because man, I don't know how they wrap this stuff so tight, but uh, they get it done. All right, so now we got that set out there. No big deal, right? Take our little separation blade, wipe any crud off of it, and just set it back in there. It can fall off the way it is right at this minute, but that's all right, we don't really care at this minute. And we can take our spring, see it's got a little space for your spring hook, part of that. The back half will go around that tab, and then you can take the front half and put it on right where that, uh, right like so. And it's the same way on the other side. Really, not a whole lot to that. Um, your two little springs, that you're not gonna get stuck together and lose, they wrap around this little tab for that little separation thing and they hook right up to that. If you do lose these, you don't necessarily, the first rebuild, you don't necessarily need to change them. It's always a good idea because heat and metal, um, it does, you know, wear metal, but generally you're okay with that one time. So now we have our spring pressure back on our separation uh, piece. And now, let me get rid of all these old springs and stuff. Now that I know that all my new ones showed up. Now what we're gonna do is fairly simple. We're gonna put the light bulbs back in. And it's just like any other bulb. Try not to touch the bulb. Don't get your oil on it. Otherwise it can pose some problems. And you just slide it through. Take your spring hook and just feed it like so. And then we have one bulb out, like so. And we'll stick the other one in. Like so. And the biggest thing is just getting them in there. And everything else is pretty easy. All right. So now what you wanna do is put your brackets on. So all you really need to do at the moment is just slide it in there. And stick the round area of... Sorry about that. This is the one point where I was saying if you had a shorter bit, it would make it a little easier. I just run with what I got. And put that one back on. Same thing for your fusing belt. You want to just get that slit on there. 
and feed it in like so and get your screw and just put that on one side at a time all right now we have our one side secured and now we're going to put these in the same way on the other side on the belt side it does have to go kind of a certain way it's got like a little tab to fit in there properly just as an FYI I generally always have to spin it around which is no big deal just feed it through like so and then push it back in and it will go right in there where it needs to be basically these brackets just hold the um, plastic ends of the bulbs in the units themselves we drop a lot of screws down here All right. and one more The um, smaller light bulb bracket uses a uh, basically like a shoulder screw, if you will, just as an FYI. All right. So now we have all that done. Now what we're gonna do? is feed the wires this one didn't tighten up all the way hmm. oh well it'll be fine as with anything, as plastic ages, it turns to crap and uh, doesn't always go back the way it should. That's okay. You can order any of these parts if you do break them um, through like precision roller or something like that. Uh, but those brackets and that I do not concern myself with. They will be just fine. Biggest thing is getting the wire into the bracket and follow the path right back to where it goes. Plug it in and shove it in there. Good deal. Same thing with the other wires. And you'll be able to visibly see, it's hard to show on camera um, without a camera person, but you'll be able to see where how this wire goes in there. I mean, there's nothing uh, complicated with this at all it's just basically putting the wire through the path and plus when you take it apart you'll be able to see and if you're nervous or whatever just take some pictures or you know, heck take a video yourself and that way you can always resort go back and see how it was done if you feel like you did something wrong so that's that all those are back in all right Get our gear line back up there that we knocked out. All right, so now I knocked my little thing off there. So now we have that all set up. And what I like to do is get the bottom part of my fuser and just set it back on there where it goes. Preferably in the proper orientation. beautiful so I just set that back like so this is just easier for me then what I like to do is get the other piece that we took off there at the beginning and just set that bad boy right on the top
put those two screws in. That's that. Then I like to take my plate here. And set it down like so. Then take your other piece. It slides right up underneath there. And let's screw it down. Very easy job to do and very, very cost effective to do. I cannot stress. Now, with the market the way it is right now, these are probably closer to $850. Normally, you know, 700 ish is where you're going to be. But why spend that kind of money on something that you can rebuild so easily? I mean, there's absolutely nothing to this. Alright, so then we have that back like so. No, I did do one mongoloid thing that I forgot. Only because I'm filming. Uh, that was my bad. I forgot to put these big springs back over. Don't do that. Just take out two screws holding that on real quick. Generally, you wouldn't do that. That was my, my goof. Just flip these springs like so. Push them back, flip it over, and push it back. Now, we're cooking with bacon. Good deal. And this video is actually full length because I've rebuilt hundreds of these and this is just about what you can expect to, to spend on doing it. Um, so. It just is what it is. Hour of your time and Save yourself a whole bunch of money. Yeah, it's a bit. Generally, it's, nah, I ain't gonna say an hour, but probably 45 minutes ish. Um, the biggest thing is having the proper workspace, which I'm not really at right now. But I was like, why not just show somebody how to save a few bucks? I mean, because I'll be frank, this repair done out of contract, if you will, or if you don't have a service contract with whomever does your stuff, I mean, you're going to get screwed. <laughs> you, there ain't no getting around there. You, you're going to pay. And... Just slap you a couple screws in there. And it might take you longer the first time. And you know what? That's quite okay. You Most people don't do this on a daily basis to know. It might take you an hour and a half. You have to decide is an hour and a half worth you saving close to five, six hundred dollars. And I will tell you, let you in on a little secret, that most people that rebuild these generally take about two hours. So you will pay for two hours worth of labor. It's just what they do. I don't believe in that. I try to get it done quick as I can for my customers, one, so they're not inconvenienced, and two, because it's just really not that hard. Now, if you got a new person coming in, you know, similar to how you would be if you were doing this yourself, it could take just a little longer. 
to me, this is one of the easier repairs to actually do. Let me get that screw that I dropped. I have no idea where it went. As long as you don't drop the screws like I do, you're good. When you drop screws, you know, you gotta find them. And then, one thing I'll point out, this cover here that flips up, it's got a little spring on that side. You just want to make sure that when you feed that through and put this on, that it, the cover is properly securing it. Every now and again, you get one that wants to be of a box. Generally, it's pretty just. The hardest part of this is getting this cover back in. All right, where'd my screw go? I lose my screw again. And then you just put that last screw down there and that keeps the tension on the spring. Just feed your wire back up in through the pathway provided in the casing. And then you, my friends, have successfully rebuilt the fuser for your machine and you save yourself 500 to 700 dollars depending on who's rebuilding it this is good for another 300,000 prints they generally don't last that long usually 200 to 250 is when they'll start giving you issues depending on your volume of print if you ever have paper exits from the fuser that are accordioning up and they're stopping right there, this is the sensor that you want to replace as well. Other than that guys, that's it. So, I hope it helps you out. And uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Hit that like button, subscribe, share the video, and we'll see you on the next one.